Hey guys, this is Eli. So I was recently playing with the Volume Builder in Cinema 4D. That's something you get with R20 and above. It's the perfect way to spend the time during a lockdown. I hope everyone is safe and healthy, by the way. And intentionally, I ended up with something that looks like these arteries. So I may just as well show you guys what the steps were to get to this result. We will go a bit faster this time, but don't worry, a full length video will also be linked in the description. So the arteries are some random splines. To get these, I started off with a platonic object, 200 centimeters in size with a vibration tag on it. In there you set it up with some rather small but fast movement. The speed is set with the frequency value. The scale values are large, I picked 5. The rotation is the full 360 degrees, but make it slower to avoid some extreme sharp bends in the splines. With that still selected, you create a tracer, which will generate a spline from every point on that object. So hit play to start generating. I stopped somewhere around frame 64. The longer you let it run, the more intersecting vessels you'll get. We want to make sure this doesn't change anymore when we move in our timeline, so make sure you make the tracer editable. And let's also set it to a subdivided B-spline to make it a bit smoother. Create a volume builder and a mesher. Put the volume builder inside of the mesher and the tracer as the bottom child of this all. The voxel size can be 2 cm for extra detail. The tracer size settings should be fine by default. Let's also add a smooth layer on top of this to get rid of the bumps. Ok, so what does this look like from the inside? Let's create a camera, 24mm to get a wider view. Create an align to spline tag and align it to the tracer. Now you can use the position value to move around through the artery system. In the bends it kinda struggles to aim in the right direction. So we can set up a null object, but also an align to spline tag. We gotta link it up to the movement of the camera, so right click on position inside of the tag of the camera itself, go to Expresso, set driver. Go to the tag of the null, Expresso, set driven. Now it moves along with the camera, but it should run ahead of time. So open this Expresso tag, click on the range mapper, and at the bottom right you can change the settings of this. The output lower setting can serve as an offset. Now you just need the camera to look at the null, so add a target tag on the camera and link it to the null. Chances are you end up having super tight corners in your spline, which gives weird movements, so that needs a workaround. Copy the tracer outside of the volume builder, Go in point mode, right click, explode segments. Now you have a list of individual splines that were generated from the platonic object its points. Pick a spline you like and delete the rest. Check if it is smooth enough in the turns and smooth them out where needed with the spline smooth tool. This is now your new camera spline. Also place it inside of the volume builder again. Make sure it is below the smooth layer and also check the values. It should be the same as the other spline. So link it back with the two aligned to spline tags. It's also probably a bit dark inside of here, so create a light, just 50% intensity, soft shadow, and make it a child of the camera so we can center it to the parent. Of course you could add any kind of material, but here's what I came up with. A Fresnel for the color channel, going from pure red to dark red. Luminance also set to red, with the mode to add, with an additional Fresnel going from grey to black. The reflectance can be bumped up and its color can have a touch of red. Finally, I added some bump noise on this to get a bit more detail and a sense of scale in the scene. To make it look like we are not in an empty blood vessel, you can also add some particles or whatever you call them. They are just a spline in a latte object, place it in a cloner with the grid mode on, a lot of them on the X value, and the other two ones can be fewer. Same goes for the endpoints, make it long and narrow, add a random effector, a tiny bit of movement along the length, but also a lot of rotation. To avoid intersections, add a push apart effector. 4 cm is just enough. Now you can also see how much the particles need to be rescaled. They're probably a bit big. Finally, add a shader effector. This will serve for the animation of the clones. Just a little movement and lots of rotation. Don't forget to add the noise shader, of course, and also add the animation speed to make it move. Now it needs to line up with the spline, so place the cloner in a null together with a spline wrap deformer. Link it to that smooth spline we made and check keep length so it doesn't stretch. Let's also link the movement with Expresso again and adjust the range mapper values. Looks good, but we need to make sure no clone sits right in front of the camera, so let's hide those with a plane effector that scales it to minus 1. 
don't forget to set a cylinder fall off which is longer than the cloner and thin enough to keep the clones at the sides. Lastly in the end of the track we just end in a dead end, so I chose to add an empty chamber right here. With the camera at the end point, create a sphere which you center to the camera position, then add it to the volume builder. You can also fill it up with clones, this time no grid mode, just the object mode linked to the sphere. Let it fill the volume and not the surface, and up the count so we have more of them. You can also just link the effectors of the other cloner to this one. And there you have it. The detailed full length video will be linked in the description and our patrons will be able to download the project files as usual. I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.